Thursday, September the 16th, 2010. And CCTV catches senior MQM member Imran Farooq at Edgware Tube Station in London. He's walking towards the 204 bus stop and his murderers. After that, the CCTV coverage stopped, but the police believe he walked for another 10 minutes and was then stabbed to death outside his home. The police found a knife and a brick used to kill him, but there was very little else to go on. The British police suspect that some people involved are being held in Pakistan. So far, the Pakistanis haven't handed anyone over, but the police here have launched a massive investigation into the murder of Imran Farooq, and they just arrested someone a couple of weeks ago at Heathrow. He's been bailed until September. They also raided this house, and it belongs to Altaf Hussein, the leader of the MQM. Around here, I wouldn't be surprised if many people didn't even know who he was. But back in Pakistan, He's one of the most famous politicians in the country. Leave of the nation! Altaf, Altaf! Father of the nation! Altaf Hussein has been a UK resident for over two decades. He has a British passport. These are his party headquarters in London. It may be a long way from Pakistan, but from here he exerts total control over his party. <laughs> He denies any involvement in the murder of Imran Farooq. And to make the point, he very publicly mourned his former colleague's death. In their raids, the police found hundreds of thousands of pounds of unaccounted for cash, and that's led to a money laundering investigation. And the Metropolitan Police are also formally investigating Altaf Hussein for something else whether he's using his London base to incite violence in Pakistan. MQM power. No. By any standards, Altaf Hussein uses rough language. <laughs> the police are now looking at clips like these and trying to assess whether they breach the law. Well, for these to be um, potentially terrorism offences, one would have to have the use or threat of force, which seems to be there on some of the clips, um, made for a political cause, and the MQM is a political body, um, designed to influence the government, and all three seem to be made out. I categorically would deny and refute that Mr. Hussein would have ever had said what you are saying to anybody. This is just simply impossible. Well, let's take the Supreme Court. They interpreted something he said as a threat and they demanded an apology. And that's the Supreme Court of Pakistan. If something that may have come uh, as a result of uh, a kind of uh, some, some emotional uh, outburst or gesture that may have come, so then we always all we are open to criticism also. We are open to correction also. Life in Karachi is dangerous. After the recent elections, a well-known political and social campaigner in the city was shot dead outside her home. Over the years, I've heard stories of how the police simply kill suspected MQM militants on the streets, meaning the MQM wants revenge. Only one former party member agreed to talk to us. He says the MQM have killed people in Karachi. You know, I cannot count, but hundreds of people. Hundreds. hundreds? Yes, hundreds of people were killed. So what did you think of those young men in your district who were, you say, killing people in the name of the MQM? I always try to convince them. It's not a nice way. What you are doing, who is going to give you the order? They directly say we got an order from the London. Here, a senior British diplomat pays Altaf Hussein a visit in North London. Normal diplomatic activity, says the Foreign Office. The MQM says the Home Office issue them with visas whenever they need them, almost without exception. So why does the government deal with a party which UK officials privately concede uses violence to achieve its goals? This letter may help answer that. Written by Altaf Hussein, it arrived in number 10 within weeks of 9-11. In it, Altaf Hussein offers Tony Blair human intelligence on jihadis. 
For years, the MQM and the Foreign Office refused to acknowledge this letter as genuine. But through a Freedom of Information request, the BBC has established that the letter is authentic and did reach number 10, who passed it on to the Foreign Office. It's a curious thing. On the one hand, here you have this party, which has a very complicated and controversial reputation in Pakistan, being run by remote control at a distance of 4,000 miles by its leader from this very city. Uh, on the other hand, it offers Britain some degree of influence in Pakistan. And also uh, protection against the jihadis. Yes, the NQM has played very heavily over the years on the idea that it presents a bulwark against Islamist extremism in Pakistan's most populated city. There's no doubt that Altaf Hussain is under ever greater pressure. And for many in Pakistan, the most pressing question is this. Will Britain put him on trial?